Welcome back to my channel guys. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Winsor Newton brush markers. This is the essential tone set. Mostly it has primary colors, a brown and a black, and yeah that's pretty much what I'm going to be reviewing. Here's just one of the markers. This is in the color sky blue and it happens to be the one of the first markers in this pack. Wow. Here's just a simple black barrel with some writing on it. It has the color up and down both sides. On the flat end or flat cap end there's the chisel nib and on the more pointed cap end you have the brush nib. I think this is kind of handy honestly so I know what the brush nib, nib is based on the shape instead of looking for like a little gray line. So I think that's pretty nice. It's something different. I don't have this in any other kind of alcohol markers. And I'm just going to be swatching these guys out. For first impressions, I think the brush is pretty nice. It feels kind of spongy, I guess is the best way to put it. More spongy than like a brush feeling. But it does work very well. The color blends over itself really nicely. I'm going to read the back of the packaging for you just so you can see what Windsor Newton has to say about their alcohol-based markers. Brush marker is a twin-tipped illustrator's marker featuring a versatile brush nib for the ultimate in precise, flexible line control. Brush marker's alcohol-based ink can be readily layered and blended to provide endless scope in rendering, color, depth, and tone. Ideal for a range of creative applications at home, college, and in the studio. And of course, they have this in French and also Spanish on the back, just in case you need other languages. It it seems like a pretty basic explanation of what their markers do. They seem to be more... I want to say they're a bit more for... Not beginners, exactly, but it doesn't seem like they're quite advertised for professionals. It does say that you can use these in the studio, so I assume like an art studio... But it doesn't seem to come right out and say, like, these are the most professional markers. I think they're pretty nice. They're a nice, like, sort of basic go-to. They have nice color vibrancy and tone. Um, I will say, though, as I get a bit further in this video, blending is not the easiest. And you will see examples of that here. Especially between this yellow and red, it was difficult to get a nice even orange color. I mean the blue and the yellow worked a little bit better to make a green which the set comes with a green so that's not a huge deal but trying to get a nice blend between the red and the yellow for orange was it was hard and I know that is a thing with alcohol markers you sort of want three colors that are similar to each other to blend them and then the closer the colors are obviously the easier it is to blend them into each other for like a smoother gradient but I was hoping for a little bit better blending than I got here. And they they do not live up to Copic standards. If you know Copic alcohol-based markers, they're sort of like the top industry standard. They just don't live up to the same caliber. Uh, I mean, the color vibrancy is very nice. And yeah, it's just the blending isn't quite there. You'll see here, though, between the green and the blue, that's what I'm doing next is green and blue blended in together. I tried to do like a feathering technique and this worked really well to blend them. I did learn though that blue and green, they <laughs> these sort of just blend pretty easily together since they are closer on the color wheel. But these two blend really well and easily together, these two markers specifically. But this feathering technique does help to blend them together. So this technique would also probably work better for the red and the yellow, although I didn't test it, which I probably should have. But the blue and the green get a nice gradient sort of transition between each other, so that's nice. For this six-pack of markers at Michael's, it costs $26.99, and it seems to be about that same price on Amazon. However, this pack that I got, I was gifted for Christmas, so... Thank you to my fantastic husband for going out and buying me art supplies. What's even better about this is he didn't even know that I wanted this brand. He just thought he remembered me talking about it and got it. So shout out to my husband for that. It's awesome. So he also happened to use a couple coupons. And what I think is nice, and I want to share this tip with you, he went up to the cash register with this item and asked if there were any discounts on it. And... Whoever was working the counter just scanned a couple barcodes that they had and 
This went from being $26.99 to $14. So it doesn't hurt to ask if you can get a discount on something. So I'm just going to pass that on along if you're interested in getting these. Ask, ask the people for some discounts. It can't hurt. The worst they can say is nope. And then, you know, Michael's always has a 40% off regular price item coupon. So you can always use that. So that is one little thing about this pack of markers. The Winsor Newton brush markers also come in 142 different shades. So there's a pretty big range. And let's see. Sorry, I'm scrolling through my phone with the little bit of research that I've done on these markers. Ah, uh, yes. These markers are not refillable. If you're used to Copics, you're used to a alcohol-based marker that is refillable. The Winsor Newton brush markers do not have any refills, at least as of yet, as of early 2020, there aren't any refills. That might change, so if you're looking at this video in the future, I might be inaccurate, but as of right now while I'm filming, they do not offer any refills. So if you want another marker, your marker is dying, you have to get a new marker. But you can buy these markers individually and not just in packs, so it does have that going for it. If you use the Ohuu brand of alcohol markers, you have to buy the entire pack to get your marker refilled. So if you have one or two that died, you have to get an entire pack of markers and that can be kind of pricey and cumbersome. So those are some pros and cons depending on what you're used to using and what you are, you know, able to do and what you prefer to do if you prefer to refill your markers or not. But yeah, um, for this review, I decided I wanted to do a finished piece of art instead of just swatching them all for you. So here it is. I just drew this cute little sketch of Evie and I saw some something similar to, I think it was a Pokemon or it might've been a Neopet. I'm not entirely sure. Actually, I think it was a Neopet. And it was just sort of like this galaxy inspired one. So I figured this would be kind of cute to do for Eevee, make Eevee galaxy inspired. I'm sure someone has done this before. So if someone's done this before, I'm not trying to steal anyone's art. I just thought it was a neat idea. And so that's why I'm making it. That's all. I feel like I have to say that now because I don't want anyone yelling at me for stealing when I'm not trying to. But yeah, I just thought this was a cool idea. So that's why I'm doing it. Okay. I need to stop explaining myself. So first impressions of using these markers on a finished piece. I really like the precision. It It is really nice. This brush marker, which is mostly what I used on this picture. I didn't use the chisel nib too much. But the brush marker itself has a really nice precise line. It was easy to get around smaller areas and curves. And I would say that it was even, it was even a bit easier than Copic's. And I think that's because the nibs on these are a bit spongier. So they feel a little bit stiffer and not as flexible. So I am still learning how to use Copic. So I think part of them not feeling as easy to control is just based on my naivete with them. But I just, I feel like for using brush markers for the first time, these would be a good option or at least a better option than Copics, just because you get a little bit more of precise control with this nib without having to really work at like learning how to use them. So that i i think that it has that going for it although the blending is kind of frustrating so as if you are new to alcohol based markers the the blending will probably annoy you a bit now if you get colors that are closer together the blending will be a lot easier like i said with the green and blue they were really easy to blend blending these markers on top of themselves to get darker tones also very easy so you sort of have to go based on what you know about yourself with art, what you prefer, all that stuff. I also tried blending the blue and red to make a purple color. It kind of worked. It's not my favorite. It doesn't look the best, but I was kind of impressed with the tone that I got. It ended up being a bit more of a rich purple than I had expected, especially with this like lighter blue color. So that worked out really well. And I, I really did enjoy that. And yes, um, at this point, <laughs> this Eevee kind of looks a little demonic maybe since I haven't colored its eyes in yet and it's looking a little trippy with its like rainbow circular ear pattern thing going on but it, it gets better it's fine it I really like the end result so just <laughs> stay with me until then it gets better 
I also like how it's the inside of its eyes turned out. They sort of look like little color wheels, and I'm just so happy about it. A bit more of my Eevee inspiration, why I picked Eevee for this instead of like Pikachu or a different Pokemon or Neopet or character or whatever. I like that Eevee can change into all these different Eeveelutions. I happen to do a piece of art on all of the Eeveelutions, just partially for me, partially to get ready for conventions. But I just like that Eevee has so many like dynamic things that it can become. It has a lot of options and it depends how like you play the games and stuff. If you don't know about Pokemon, Eevee is a Pokemon you collect and then you can evolve it into different Pokemon and it has a lot of options for evolutions. But I just like that it has so many different options and it's just... Eevee is one of my favorite Pokemon because it is such a dynamic character. So that's a bit where this inspiration came from with doing the galaxy pattern, all the different colors. It sort of is like this background to Eevee that it has so many options of what it can become and it just it's just a dynamic Pokemon, you know? Like it has so many options of who it wants to be. It's almost like Eevee's in this like crisis almost, of, like an identity crisis. Oh, who am I? What am I going to turn out to be? I don't know. That's sort of how I see Eevee, but it's just one of my favorite Pokemon. All right, I'm rambling. Ooh, back to the art and these markers. <laughs> um, if you've stuck with me this long into the video and listened to my rambling, thank you. You're the best and probably should get a prize, but I have nothing to give out except my undying gratitude. So thank you. And yeah, for, for these markers, it was really nice to work on a finished piece with them instead of just swatching them out and sort of guessing how they would work it's nice to actually work on a piece with them to really get a vibe of how they work i think my overall recommendations for these markers are they're nice to try out if you're interested in trying them out that's awesome i'll leave a link below so you can check that out but i think if you're used to copic markers you probably won't enjoy these as much just because copics really are sort of the standard and their brush nib really does feel different i think the brush markers from windsor and newton give you a bit more of a precise control but if you're already used to Copics, I think that you won't really need that sort of, like, help with the brush control because you already know how to use Copic markers to get a precise line. So that's sort of my impression of it. If you are already used to Copics, I don't know that these would be an enjoyable option for you. I'm still getting used to Copic markers myself, so I like these. I think they're really nice to use, and it is also nice to use markers that are slightly less expensive than Copics, because I'm a little nervous when I use my Copics, because I sort of feel like I can hear the money leaving my wallet, even though it's already left. But yeah, I think these are a good option, especially like for a beginner that wants a bit more of a professional marker than something maybe like Ohuu, although Ohuu has very nice markers, it's a very nice brand. If you want something a bit more expensive and a bit higher quality, I think you would enjoy these markers, especially for learning how to use a brush nib and getting those precise lines and all of that stuff. But again, I, I really feel like I can't stress this enough. If you're going to try these markers, I would suggest getting colors that are close to each other. So like reds in a couple of shades that are a little different or blues in a couple of shades that are slightly different just because it makes the blending a lot easier so you won't get as frustrated. Because even though I layered up a lot of these to try and blend them more easily, it really was only like the blue and green worked really well. And the purple did surprise me, I will say that. But yellow to red to make an orange just, I was unimpressed. It didn't work very well. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of these markers. Probably getting colors that are closer in spectrum to each other will be better. And it will be easier to get used to blending them. But that's my two cents on it. I'll stop uh, stop rambling and trying to convince you of my opinions. Um, but yeah, these I like how these work. I think they're nice. I think their quality is a bit better than some other alcohol markers. Like, like Ohuu, but again, I really like the Ohuu brand. So I can't really diss it that much. I just think these are just slightly better. And you can get them individually, which really I think helps because it's cheaper to replace one marker than a whole set of markers. But yeah, if you're already you're used to Copics, I would say stick with Copics, honestly. Like these are fine. I think they're fine to try out and test, but I don't think you will prefer them to Copics. I might be wrong. If you have tried these and you prefer these to Copics, let me know. 
because I, I am curious to know your guys' opinions. I am only one artist. I am only one person. My opinions may be very, very different from yours, and that's okay because I'm a different person than you are. But if you have your own recommendations or opinions on any of these things, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on these markers if you tried them or if you tried Ohuu or Copix. Let me know. Um, I will leave all product links and such in the description as usual because, you know, that's the YouTube thing. And yeah, um, this is the one part of the video where I'm using the chisel nib to cover a wider background. And I liked it. The chisel nib is nice. It's, I have no complaints. Works like a chisel nib. I enjoyed it. It also blended pretty smoothly, which was really nice. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you really liked it, make sure you like it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so you don't miss any videos. And yeah, that's um, that's just about as much as I have to say for this. Oh, yes. And of course, I had to add in all the stars because it's a galaxy picture. Have to have stars in a galaxy. And admittedly, my camera did kind of die while I was working on this part. So I added in some more stars off camera, but... It's basically the same thing. So you didn't miss much. It's all good. All right. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to go. Thanks for watching this video, guys. It means a lot to me. And yeah, I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye. Add some more shenanigans into your life by following me on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, make sure you're subscribed to this very channel so you don't miss out on any of my latest shenanigans. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. It means a heck of a lot to me. See you in the next one. Bye.